collective responsibility a useful fiction? Lessons from social movement research. The main observation that shapes this presentation is that debates about collective responsibility largely proceeded independently of empirical social sciences. Yet these debates hinge on empirical claims about group workings and the causal efficacy of contested entities such as collective beliefs and collective intentions. This presentation also engages with two claims that are often used to motivate the idea of collective responsibility. The first one is about the frequency of instances in which people ascribe responsibility to collectives. And the second one is about causal irreducibility of collectives to individuals and their interactions. We endorse and agree with both these claims. However, Unlike collective realists, we argue that the frequency of instances in which people ascribe responsibility to collectives is best understood with a fictionalist framework about meaning. We also argue that the causal irreducibility of collectives on its own is not enough to justify ontological commitments to social agency and social responsibility, at least when it comes to social movements. Here is a quick roadmap of what I will be talking about. I will start with situating our claims in the conversation about collective responsibility, then explain what we mean by fictionalism, and then this, describe the role and limitations of causal irreducibility of collectives to individuals in justifying collective responsibility. I'll shortly mention the usefulness of maintaining the discourse and collective responsibility and conclude that our fictionalist approach maintains the best of all worlds. First, situating our view in debates about collective responsibility. To situate our discussion about collective responsibility, it is important to distinguish forward and backward looking collective responsibility mostly because of the differences in their ontological commitments. When we talk of backward-looking collective responsibility, we mean something like a group G is responsible for a morally harmful outcome if and only if G is blameworthy for that outcome. When we talk about forward-looking responsibility, we mean something like a group G is responsible for a morally harmful outcome if and only if G is morally charged with addressing that outcome. It is important to note that our view is completely compatible with forward-looking responsibility or even something like Iris Young's social connection model of responsibility in which all agents who contribute by their actions to the structural processes that produce injustice have responsibilities to work to remedy these injustices. It's also compatible with shared responsibility that refers to the responsibility of group members for such harm in cases where acted together to bring the harm about. What our view aims to challenge, however, is the backward-looking responsibility, mostly because of its ontological commitments. This notion of responsibility is associated with the single unified moral agent, and the problem is that it is commonly assumed that to scribe group with collective responsibility, the backward-looking responsibility for a harm, we must assume that group can perform intentional actions that cause morally harmful outcome. However, this outcome, an assumption, comes with a metaphysical baggage and requires beliefs in a unified agent with collective intentional action that we argue is unjustified. It is also required to have causal historical components which we completely agree with and will describe shortly. Two, fictionalism. Fictionalism is a theory about meaning and is relevant to our discussion when we discuss the meaning for the following sentences. Something like movement M intends to do phi, or by extension, 
movement M is morally responsible for harm H. Our fictionalist approach involves the following components. First, collective intentions and collective responsibility sentences express propositions that represent groups as having collective intentions. Second, in accepting a collective intention or collective responsibility sentence, competent speakers will understand that sentence ought not to believe that the group has collective intentions. Third, in uttering a collective intention or collective responsibility sentence, competent speakers who understand that sentence ought not to assert that the group has a collective intentions. Rather, they ought to perform the distinct linguistic action of quasi-assertion, whereas sincere assertion normally conveys beliefs in the proposition expressed, sincere quasi-assertion does not. A comparison between our fictionalist account of meaning and what collective realists would expect from collective intention sentences is helpful. Although both fictionalism and collective realism agree that sentences that express propositions that represent groups as having collective intentions, they disagree on what the competent speaker ought to believe and what, and what, what attitudes should have. The main points of our fictionalist account can be summarized as follows. First, Accepting a sentence that ascribes collective responsibility or intentions to a group should not require the belief that the group it describes have collective intentions. Instead, it should involve other attitudes such as contempt, respect, compassion, etc., that signals to others how they ought to respond to the group. It also involves believing sentences like the following. M social structure and members are organized so that M is disposed to fly. Or M social structure and members are organized so that M caused harm H. Three, causal responsibility. There are an abundance of difference in difference models that show that a collection of different events in a movement can cause meaningful change. For instance, on the right, you can see a headline from Scientific American that indicates that killings by police declined after Black Lives Matter protests. This study also found body camera use in community policing increased in places with the most active movements. There are a variety of studies like that about different social movements. And they all indicate that it is plausible, empirically speaking, to argue that movements are causally responsible for certain consequences. And in some cases, at least, this causal role is irreducible to what individuals could have done. In the left, you can see a figure that shows four idealized network models for social movements. These structures arise from different levels of centralization and segmentation in a network. In this structure, nodes are actors and links are resource exchanges of some kind or the influence or interactions that individuals have with one another. These structures identify the simultaneous influence of agents involved in the decision-making processes as well. One plausible implication of some of these structures is that there is no individual or groups that can be identified as responsible for decisions or actions that involves the decision-making processes of many individuals all at once. These decisions together determines the group's paths and the resulting entity that comes out of it are often is not reducible to its components. This causal responsibility that is irreducible has a tight connection to social structures and networks that works emphasizing. The 
relationship. In fact, the causal relationship between these structures and the causal power of social movements have been the topic of many recent studies about social movements. These structures are a result of individual actions and preferences, and in part, they impact individuals and actions and preferences themselves. This combination of individuals and the structure of their interactions is said to be irreducible to individuals and their interactions. But collective moral responsibility requires more than a causal link between the movements and the consequences. For movements to be causally responsible, there should be a unified agent and collective intentions. More importantly, such a unified agent and collective intentions should be causally relevant to the emergence of the consequences. In fact, if we adopt a naturalistic ontology, such a causal relationship between the unified agent and collective intentions would be a part of our best scientific explanations about social movements, and the inference to that scientific explanation would justify the ontological commitment necessary for pleading in sentences that involve collective responsibility, collective intentions, and a unified agent. If so, then we could conclude that it would be scientifically rational to believe that social movement possess such collective goals. But as we shall argue, it's not the case that collective goals are a part of the best explanation of phenomena related to social movements. So it's not scientifically rational to believe that collective goals exist. Notice that I made a change or a switch between uh, intentions and goals. But the idea is that if an agent intends to fight, then the agent has fighting amongst its goals. But when it comes to empirical support for collective goals, we have some messy situations. One of the leading figures in the study of social movements impacts is William Gamson. In his groundbreaking study, Gamson gathered data about 53 social movements between 1800 and 1945 to find the determinants of success or failure for these movements. Gamson's study is one of the few that investigates the relationship between the movement's goals and their likelihood for success. Despite the prominence of Gamson's study, social movement research has abandoned this approach because of the theoretical and methodological reasons. The theoretical reasons involve the following. Movements are often coalitional and involve different groups with different goals. And in fact, dismissing the heterogeneity and fluidity of the movements lead to serious moral harms and reduces the explanatory power of our explanations. Social movements have unintended and in fact unpredictable consequences. Movements' goals and demands evolve gradually over time, and the fact that the movements' goals and directions can change endogenously implies heterogeneity and fluidity in goals, commitments, individuals, and relationships. Methodological reasons to abandon collective goals are a little bit more complicated and because of the short amount of time we have in hand, we just mention it here, but we are hopeful that we can bring this up in our Q&A and discuss it further. They involve measurement error and omitted variable bias. And you can see a short description of these two below. In sum, it seems plausible to say that in scientific theories of social movements, discussions about goals, and by extension, discussions that involve intentions are at least unnecessary. Instead, explanatory work is mostly done by social structures and the dynamics of network formation. In other words, we don't need those collective agents and collective intentions. And the causal responsibility will be established and well supported. 
the usefulness of a discourse that attributes collective responsibility to social movements. There are a variety of reasons for why it is useful to consider social movements morally responsible for what they bring about. For one, movements benefit from displaying their numbers and framing themselves as a coherent unit with moral worthiness and responsibility for their past and future behavior. Our fictional's approach allows sincere quasi-assertion of statements that indicate such unity and responsibility without committing to any unjustified ontological claim. Conclusion. In sum, we call social movements morally responsible for what they bring about. We also have empirical reasons to believe that they are causally responsible for change. But these empirical reasons do not require any commitment to collective intentions or a unified agent. Therefore, from the standpoint of a naturalized ontology, it is not scientifically rational to believe in what is necessary for collective responsibility, namely collective intentions or a unified collective agent. However, this does not mean that one is insincere in uttering a sentence like, movement M is morally responsible for harm H. We provided a fictionalist framework of meaning that specifies what such a sentence entails and demands from a competent speaker. In other words, fictionalism about collective intentions and responsibility fits better with empirical social sciences. Thank you.